Hello and welcome to a new series here in Crusader Kings 2 with the Historical Immersion Project mod. The eagerly awaited new version of HIP has just been released which adds the Eastern expansion. Let's go to custom game setup here so we can check out the map. So the new HIP map now extends as far as the Empire of Rajasthan here and um, I for one am very excited to get a new game started here. So I'm going to do something a bit different to my last few HIP series. They've been uh, mostly with ahistorical starts in the Shattered Balance or New World Order options, respectively. But this time we're going to go for something a bit more historical, namely the Byzantine Empire. But we don't want to make things too easy if we're starting as the Byzantines, so we're going to go forward in time a bit to the Alexiad start date where the Byzantines are in a little bit more of a tricky position. After a series of devastating losses to invading Turkish forces, the Byzantine Empire is reeling. But there is hope. The great general Alexios Komnenos has just seized the throne from the corrupt Nikephoros III. Alexios, whose life was documented by his daughter Anna in the Alexiad, and his successors would halt the decline of the empire and push back the Turkish invaders from western Anatolia, buying more time for the ailing remnants of the old Roman Empire for now. Anatolia is ruled by Suleiman I, a member of the Seljuk dynasty, related to the very large and scary Seljuks over here, who arrogantly calls his new state the Sultanate of Rum, or Rome. So let's load in and get started. So unfortunately this being a new release, there are a few small issues with this start date, namely with the uh, scripted wars that we start in here, which I'll just talk about for a moment. So, we know about Crusader Kings 2, we are a Greek Orthodox feudal leader, that's fine. And extended mechanics and flavor, which, by the way, if you're not familiar with HIP, it is a collection of submods, basically, which aim to improve the historical accuracy and flavor and gameplay of Crusader Kings 2. It adds lots of new provinces to the map, it adds flavor events, new mechanics, all sorts of cool stuff, and is generally good. So yes, the problems with the scripted wars that we start in here, there are a couple of problems, namely that uh, we have two wars going on simultaneously with Duke Robert of Apulia over here. And the other problem is that this war, the Pechenegh invasion of the Balkans, these are our northern neighbors here, tends to end inconclusively after uh, the first day. So that's unfortunate, but these aren't major issues, so we're just going to uh, deal with them and carry on. So let's actually check out our character first. We are the great general, Basileus Alexios of the Byzantine Empire. We are a pretty good general with 16 marshal, 20 stewardship is also pretty good. We're married already. Our current heir is our brother, Isaacios, who is an okay character himself. We'll be hoping to have children of our own to take over instead, though. Um, as mentioned, we are married to... Basilissa Irene here. No particularly good genetic traits for her or for us, but hopefully we can breed some into our dynasty eventually. We do need to appoint a Lagothet. So we'll give the job to this guy. We'll choose an ambition for ourselves, I suppose, to have a son, since we don't have one. But I think we'll hold off on picking a character focus for the moment, just to see what we might need to uh, get a little bit of help with. If we have a lot of vassal problems and factions and stuff, we might want to choose a diplomacy focus. Okay, so apart from that, we'll just uh, unpause here. I guess we can look at the customization decisions, but we're going to play pretty much historical here, so we're not going to change any of these. No lucky rulers, no gender equality. We'll leave the tribes tribal. We won't feudalize them or convert to a merchant republic or anything like that, so... That's all going to be as is. Obviously the long-term goal for this series is going to be to be able to click the Reform the Roman Empire button, which we don't actually have yet, it'll appear in a minute here. But that's going to involve conquering a lot of land throughout the historical Roman Empire, Rome, Italy, all the land in the, well obviously Anatolia here, and then the Levant and down into Egypt even. But that's more of a long-term goal. For now we just want to survive this initial war or two wars. So the Pechenegh invasion ends inconclusively. Oh, there's something in your hair. 
I rove my fingers at the place my servant pointed at. Lo and behold, some small clump of dirt was there. Wonder how that got there. So, bad start to our rule here. So we need to pay more attention to our personal hygiene. And uh, we can conscript merchant ships, that's not going to be necessary, but we can expect to see Apulia here invading us with some troops very soon. So let's get our levies raised. And I suppose they're going to be just transporting troops across the ocean here and landing somewhere in this re region, so we'll get our armies gathered together. And not right on the coast, we don't want to be vulnerable to him landing his army right on top of us, but nearby. I think we'll just disband these troops on the islands here. Uh, you guys can start making the long walk over here, though. So in the brief testing I did, the fact that there are two wars going on with the, the Duke here is not really an issue, it doesn't seem to cause any problems. We can usually just piece them both out at the same time. Assuming that we win, of course. Which is not really a foregone conclusion. He's relatively strong. He's got 8,000 and we have 11,000 here, so it's not insignificant. And he has Sicily with him too. So together they outnumber us. But we'll just have to hope that we can outmaneuver them. I do believe that we have an unmarried sister. Her husband died a natural death, so we can use her for an alliance, which might be a good idea. Let's see what characters are available. So we've got Lesser Armenia, we can get Denmark, Elodia. Well, we definitely want somebody nearby and as strong as we can find, so I think we can discount the likes of Abyssinia, Denmark, Sweden. Uh, Alania is pretty close by, they're up here. He's only got 1,700 troops though. Uh, we also had Lesser Armenia. How strong are you? You're pretty strong. I think we'll go for an alliance with him if we can get him to agree to this marriage. Uh, he seems to be amenable to that. Great. We'll get that started. No factions forming. How do our vassals feel about us? They're mostly pretty happy, it looks like. Mostly because we're defending against foreigners, though, so that will drop off. We might want to choose a diplomacy focus, since they weren't extremely happy. Let's go with carousing for the moment. Obviously, as we gain prestige and that kind of thing, and gain a long rain bonus or lose our short rain bonus, their opinions will improve. So he agrees to the marriage, that's good, we can call him into the war. Uh, let's call him in. We may not need him, but it doesn't hurt. No sign of the Apulian army just yet. There they are, okay. So let's see, they seem to be coming ashore. I don't think we can see where they're going, but we can guess it's probably Nicopolis here. That is plain, so if we can attack them in there, that should be reasonably good terrain. Possible that we can get in there without a river crossing, maybe? Great Vlachia. Unfortunately, there is a river crossing. Looks like everywhere, so... That is unfortunate, but not the end of the world. So we have a bit of a numbers advantage here. There's a Sicilian fleet, though. Seems like they're headed up to Constantinople. Okay. Strategos Tatikios has challenged you to a friendly game of... Zikanion at the oh, Canisterion Stadium in Great Vlachia. This popular Byzantine game can trace its origins back to Sassanid Persia 
and features two teams on horseback using sticks with nets to get a leather ball into the opposing team's goal. Will you accept the challenge? Well, we kind of have important business going on right now, Tatikios. But I don't think I can decline a challenge like that. Spend a wonderful afternoon at the place playing a tense game of game that ends in victory for your team. Your opponent and his team are magnanimous in defeat and you just depart the stadium as friends. So we gain prestige and he likes us better. Good. All right, so I think we'll probably just go ahead and attack the army here. I think we have a big enough advantage. Let's make sure that we have our best characters in charge though. 23. Maybe we'll decline to lead a flank ourselves. But of course we'll put the captain of the Varangian guard in charge. All right. We could wait for these troops to arrive, but I think we'll be just fine. Uh, let's actually disband this army since Sicily is about to land some troops there and they're likely to get squished. All right, let's hope this battle goes well. Uh, we have a fleet from Barcelona here too. And Croatia has been called in, that seems bad. Well. Let's see how this first battle goes. They have no leader in the right flank, so that's good news for us. They've managed to find some good defensive terrain there, though. May as well reinforce with this 800. Alright, our first battle has ended successfully. We will follow the army and wipe it out if we can. Lesser Armenia has his 6,000 troops on the way over, which I appreciate. As strong as Croatia. Oh dear, they could, they could uh, cause some serious problems here. Uh, let's see. We better disband this army too. And we'll head north to deal with the Sicilian army. Maybe we can get him to accept peace in this war. No, of course not. Okay. Well, we'll keep an eye out for Croatia. Maybe they're in another war. Nope. They will be placing their full attention on us. Good to know. A young artist is working on what is clearly a divinely inspired icon, uh, depicting Christ Pantocrator. Or Pantocrator? I don't know how that's pronounced. He needs sponsorship to finish it so we can place it in our own chapel. We can spend 39 gold, gain one diplomacy. Uh, we are just about slightly making money right now, but I don't think I can really afford to spend 40 gold. Unfortunately, we're going to lose 25 gold and the Zealous trait. So we lose some Marshall score there. I guess it is not the end of the world, though. Okay, so I think we might try to wait for Lesser Armenia to get over here and we can have a much quicker and better battle against Sicily here. Going to arrive same day. Couldn't have planned it better. Did take a river crossing, but with the numbers advantage here, this should be relatively quick and easy. Only lost 500 troops. And here is a Croatian fleet. Okay. We'll see where they are landing troops. 11,000 down here on Chios. Well, unfortunately, we don't want to attack them across a strait. So I think we'll head in this direction under the assumption that Barcelona is landing some troops in this area. Maybe they're not. Are some more troops from Apulia arriving over here though? So maybe we'll just hang around here and fight them instead. 
Only about a thousand. I have to say our ally is being very helpful and sticking right beside our army here. Which I definitely appreciate. He still won't take white peace. So we could transport our troops across and try to siege some of his land. But I think instead, what we'll probably do is uh, deny our brother Fief of his own to govern here. But we'll probably just wait for Croatia to finish sieging the holdings here and come ashore and fight them then. Or if we happen to see any other armies land, we can go and fight them. There are rumours that certain tax collectors in my realm are disgustingly corrupt. Unfortunately, I don't have any good evidence to back this up, even after a lengthy investigation. Still, the commoners are convinced otherwise. If I don't do something, they might grow restless. But on the other hand, imprisoning the officials without cause would be problematic as well. Well, we could potentially gain the trait arbitrary here by arresting the officials indiscriminately. Or we can anger the peasants, giving us national revolt risk. We could become patient or proud. Mm, I think we'll take the risk of becoming arbitrary. The national revolt risk could be a real problem here. Okay, we did not become arbitrary, that's fine. Oh dear, Croatia landing some more troops. Only a few more. An envoy gave me a gift of baklava. Delicious, delicious it is without any rival in syrupy sweetness and culinary delight, one would think. So we are eating good food, giving us extra diplomacy and health. Which is nice. It seems like Barcelona decided to move away. Our enemy has died, the war has ended, so Duke Robert has died. Okay, so this apparently ended one of the wars, inconclusively, but we still have this one going on. It has It's the one with Croatia and Sicily in it, so... Basically the same thing. Uh, Apulia has lost some land, though, so I guess they will be a bit weaker as a consequence. I guess the uh, Duchy of Calabria has been called in. And Salerno, so maybe not actually weaker. Ah, and Croatia has come ashore, so we can engage them. They're headed into Izmir, which is hills. So let's see if we can change their mind about that and attack them in Aden instead. We're crossing a river here, but I think there's going to be river crossings everywhere. Yeah, so we'll just take that. Again, we have the numbers advantage, so I would expect this to go okay. Especially since they only have leaders in one of their flanks. And my brother Izakios is asking me for a fee of his own. We'll mention a church career. Okay, and that battle went just fine. We're up to 38%. See if we can get a white piece. I think we'll accept a white piece. We could stand to gain a nice amount of gold by pressing them to 100, but that would involve staying at war for a long time, transporting troops across, probably. So we'll be happy with our white piece, gain some prestige, and bring our armies back home. Okay, so that's our initial crisis basically dealt with. I guess it was a fortunate thing for us that we didn't also have to deal with a simultaneous invasion from the Pechenegs. But if it's an unavoidable bug, then it's not an exploit. Or at least that's my view. So now we can look to uh, offensive wars, I guess. Uh, we can also see if we have any decisions we can do now that we're at peace. Uh, yes, let's actually look at our more long-term goals here for restoring the Roman Empire. We're going to need to control Jerusalem, Alexandria, 
Ifrikia, Croatia, Genoa, Sicily. So basically, uh, all of Italy, North Africa, the Levant, Anatolia, and uh, some more of the Balkans, I think. What's going to be necessary for that? Uh, for the Great Schism, we just have to control the five religious cities. Constantinople, Antioch, Jerusalem, Alexandria, and Rome. So, basically we'll be able to achieve both of those at the same time in the distant future. And we can hold a great tourney in Constantinople, which we'll do as soon as we have the available money, I suppose, assuming we're making a reasonable income now with our levies raised, or lowered rather, which we are. So it looks like we might have an easy target here for our first war. This guy is revolting against Room. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot afford the 100 piety that it would cost us. We may be blocked from doing that. I guess we could declare our own war against the Vichenegs. Seems only fair. They really wanted a war with us, so we can give them one. So we have a wide selection of CBs available. We have de jure claims by virtue of our empire title on, for example, the theme of Peristrion. And these Liberate CBs probably would just give us the same thing. We have de jure claims based on our vassals here. I think we may as well just do the de jure claim. Probably doesn't matter too much. So let's see, we have about 10,000 troops available. He has 5,000, though... I don't think this factors in his tribal vassals. He only has two of those, though. So I'm going to assume this isn't going to be... a bad idea. He does have feudal vassals also. Well... Maybe we'll just depend on our allies in Lesser Armenia to help us out. I think we'll be okay, though. Uh, why don't we actually wait until the 1st of January to raise our troops? Get a little bit of reinforcements to our levy. And we'll have them gather together here. We know he's distracted with another war, so we shouldn't be in too much danger of running into his army if we gather there. This we'll have to disband, though. And we'll get you on the way over. Ah, dangerous factions. Probably we should have uh, waited to see if we needed to deal with that before we declared another war. Seems like they want to lower Crown Authority, so I guess, worst case scenario, we can just lower the Crown Authority and that should appease them. Let's try and hold off on doing that if at all possible. It's not actually that dangerous yet, at 75%. We are annoying our vassals by raising their levies though, which isn't going to help. Ooh, and I don't feel too well, something is wrong with me, I'm burning up with fever, my nose is running and my head feels as if someone is banging something hard against it, so we are ill. Let's hope that doesn't prove fatal. And let's call in Lesser Armenia again. He's relatively happy with me. And there is the Pichenic army. So with 5,000 there, I guess we can fight him pretty effectively. Let's make sure we have our good generals in charge. He is headed into Sofia, which is hills. Let's see if we can get there first and change his mind. And instead, attack him in here. We are not going to catch him, unfortunately. Uh, 
I don't really want to catch him in this county because it's hills as well, but if we can catch him here, that would be great. I'm gonna cross a river, but we can probably handle it. Get our reinforcements on their way. Steward probably didn't notice. Didn't think I'd notice if a few coins here and there went missing, but the steady disappearance may be suspicious. We'll question him. He declared he was innocent, and the cook was buying extra eggs. Okay. So we crossed a river. But I think we're going to be just fine. Okay, 52% war score for that battle, so that's a great start in that war. We are going to have to wait for the next episode to continue it though, because we're out of time for this one. Uh, thanks for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, uh, clicking the like button is a really good way to help out, especially on the first video in a series like this one. Especially, uh, well, only if you like the video, I suppose. But in any case, I hope you'll join me again next time. And again, thanks for watching.